This is what Plato was thinking about when he said ham sandwich. Hi everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. Today it's tortas de jamón and we are not talking ham sandwiches. Well, I mean, in one way we're talking ham sandwiches, but this just blows out of the water most of what people think of as a ham sandwich. And I'm gonna show you two different versions, one with melted cheese and one with queso fresco, the fresh cheese that you can find at any Mexican grocery store. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do anytime that we're making tortas is to make the uh, spread of beans, and I'm using canned black beans for this. It's just a simple spread. Think of it sort of like the mustard or mayonnaise that you're going to put onto the sandwich, but it gives it a really clear Mexican flavor. Um, you have to add some fat to it. You could use pork lard, you could use bacon drippings. I'm using a little olive oil here. You could re use regular vegetable oil. We're just going to make a spread out of it. So I'm gonna turn this on and let it go until it's completely smooth. Okay, that is sort of a creamy smoothness. I'm going to leave it sit right there as we begin to build the first of these tortas de jamón that we're going to, to make. So I split a telera roll. This is the one that's got the three humps in it. I'm not using a bolillo here, but you could easily use a bolillo. It's just a little breadier. Everything spreads out better in a telera. And over the bottom of this, I'm going to spoon a nice spread of this black bean puree that we have here. And I didn't bother to taste this because I bought black beans that have already been salted. Um, so we're just making a puree out of, out of that. I will leave that set there. Now on top of that, I'm going to put some ham. Uh, the better the ham, the better the sandwich. This is a beautiful smoky one. And because we're building this and we're going to make this one into the warm version of this, um, I really wanted that good smokiness here. I've got three slices of a melting cheese. This is a good place to find, to use Monterey Jack, or you could even use Munster or um, a, like a white cheddar. Any of those will work for this. In Mexico, it would typically be what they called manchego cheese. It doesn't relate to manchego in uh, Spain at all, but I'm just gonna lay those there, put that onto a baking sheet and run this into a 400 degree oven. I've got it already hot here and we are going to let that um, stay in there until the bread is crisp and on top, you see all that melted cheese sort of running down, okay? Um, you know, I'm gonna slide the top part in there to toast alongside. Now for the second one, uh, this is the kind of torta that you might find at a little torteria that is say by a subway stop in Mexico City where they have these already built for you and you can just go by, pick one up, pay for it and go on your way. So nothing is gonna be heated in this though I do suggest that you toast the bread before you start it so that it gets a nice little crunch to it on the end, it refreshes it. So we're gonna start um, by just doing exactly what we did with the other one, taking our bean spread and smearing that over the bottom of the telera bun. And then we're going to put the portion of ham on top of that. I'm being generous with this ham. You can put as much as or as little as you want to on there. And then instead of a melting cheese, this one's going to have queso fresco. So it's usually sold in rounds like this. I'm gonna take that piece off so that I can get some nice little slices here. And we will put some slices of queso fresco across here. Now on top of that, we are going to uh, put some tomato. So I am going to slice the bottom of this off just a little bit. Um, and then put three nice slices of tomato over that. 
We've got an avocado here. This is where, man, it starts to go in a great direction for me because I like those kinds of flavors. Um, so we'll cut around the pit of the avocado, twist it apart, and then with a spoon, now you can scoop out the whole half here and slice it if you want to, or you can do kind of what the street vendors do, which is to slice with a spoon. They don't look as beautiful, but when you eat this, <laughs> they will taste just as delicious. So we'll do that across there. And then of course, it wouldn't be a torta if we didn't put some of chili on here. So I'm putting strips of pickled jalapeno. And I think it's such an important part of the sandwich itself that I put quite a lot there. Our last thing is to do this mixture of crema. Now you could use just regular sour cream here if you wanted to, or this is a homemade in sort of the creme fraiche style, what they would call crema de rancho in Mexico, mixed with mayonnaise, equal parts of that. It's something you find a lot used in Baja, um, and I like that. So be generous with that on the top piece of your sandwich. And flip that over. And then I'm gonna cut this one in half so that we can see what that looks like. Now that is more than just a sandwich. Okay, so I'm going to put that one over here and then I am going to pull out of the, ref the oven here the melted cheese one. And that's looking really lovely. So take the base off here, clean up my little mess there. The top will go over here and we're going to build this one very much like we built the last one. So the next thing that we're going to do here is cut three slices of tomato and then avocado will go over that shingle those guys there and then our avocado slices over that at any point here if you feel like you want to uh, sprinkle some salt on anything you could easily do that so we'll slice those in there we have our pickled jalapeno strips and the crispy top down on that one. I forgot to put the mayonnaise crema mixture on the top of the melty torta, but I went back and put it on and then we ate it afterwards and it was really good. So just don't forget it. And cut that one in half. I'm gonna put this one over here so that you can see just how beautiful that is. Switch this to a matching plate over here so that I can show you both of these together. And what you're gonna have is two similar flavors, but one of them, which is really dear to my heart, is a warm sandwich. I love warm ham sandwiches in particular. So this would be my choice over here, but I will tell you, if you're feeding a big crowd and wanna get ahead of the game, you could easily make these. Wrap them up, keep them in your refrigerator, and then when the gang comes over, you can just bring them out and share these beautiful Mexican ham sandwich flavors with all of your friends or family.